muscles and about protein and what that what that that Starbucks drink does to you, not that one, but what Starbucks does to your body. If you don't, I know, if you don't get that, then you won't progress. But if you don't understand that the first part of that is psychology and sociology, you won't ever get to that point. If you don't think about the right way to live your life, right? If you don't have the right mindset, if your structure of your life is not right sociology, if all your friends eat Burger King, or you, none of your friends want to be fit, none of your friends want to be top-selling agents, then your sociology is messed up and your psychology is messed up. So guess what? The biology, the chemistry, the physiology will never work. Ever. Right? So the same is true with, with whatever it is, right? So he can teach you all the sales techniques. He can send you off to all the best seminars. To, you know, but if you don't understand that you have to grind and you want it bad enough, I can send you everywhere and it won't work. Right? There, there, there's a, enough information out there for everybody to, to access. Right? You don't really need to go to a seminar to learn how to, how to, how to close sales. I mean, there's stuff on the internet and books you can buy. Yes, it's good to go in person and get some hands-on stuff at a, at, a, at a workshop, but you don't really need that. You don't really need me to tell you how to, how to lose weight. You can find that information on your phone right now. Right? But the problem is we don't fix this right. Right? And what's, what's beautiful about this is, is, is I, I have to go through it too and recognize the areas where I'm not doing the right stuff. Right? I wanted to be a speaker my whole life. I didn't even know it until recently. Right? And so I went to Toastmasters for two years, went to a speech pathologist, right? Went to a, went to a, went to a psychologist to understand why I was so afraid of speaking, right? Afraid of speaking and, and, and never fixed the important part. I don't, want to, I don't want to speak. Inside of me, I don't want to speak. I was too afraid to speak. So I, anywhere I went, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have helped me because I didn't fix that part right first. That makes sense? So, so the five steps that I get into, they kind of go from there. They kind of they teach you guys that I can give you all the tools, all the techniques and tricks in fitness. Right? My boy DP, I call him DP. He can give you all the tools. He's been around his business for, his, for more than half his life. It's been in his family for all of his life. Mm -hmm. So he can give you whatever tool you need to be great, to be better than him. Am I right? Mm -hmm. He can give you whatever you need, people, resources, education, you need. Right? But the foundation ain't, ain't right. If you don't really want to be great, you're wasting this time and your time. Right? If you don't believe you can be great, you're wasting this time and your time. Make sense? Right? So whatever it is, lose weight. Build a career. You know, have a good bond with your children or your spouses, right? It's, it's about the foundation, right? You can go to a therapist all you want for marriage counseling. If you don't want to be married anymore, it ain't going to work. The best, the best counselor in the world the, the, at, at 500 bucks an hour ain't going to say that if you don't want to be married no more. Am I right? So, that's, that's, so, so it starts with a foundation, right? girl, right? This is years ago, obviously. She's 15 now. He's 12, right? I'm the best person to teach you this stuff. I believe that. Why? Because I have applied the five steps of greatness. I'm going to go with you guys. Go, go over with you guys. I've applied them my whole life. I didn't know I was applying them, right? But I look back. I, I applied the five steps of greatness to play football at UC Davis, I applied the five steps of greatness to get my MBA from Santa Clara. It's a kid who's never the smartest kid in my class, ever. Ever. I applied the same five steps, right, to go off after that to be a CFO, a chief financial officer for two startups over, over a decade. Can you imagine me being a CFO? That's, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. plenty of walls had holes in it. <laughs> and me throwing phones. I swear to God, throw a phone in the wall. Right? And now I'm, 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 I'm applying the same steps to, to speaking. Right? So the beauty of that is, is and, and being a good father and a husband. My wife didn't want me to include a picture of her, so I still love her. I do love my wife. <laughs> no, I, I, I'll be there for hours. 
Is this good enough, Christian? No, it's not good. I'm too fat in that one. Is this a good one? No, my chest. No, okay. You ain't, you ain't in the slideshow, man. <laughs> yeah, I still love you. You ain't in the slideshow, but you know what? Because nothing's good enough, right? So, they even know. She don't even go online. Uh, online, I go virtual. She don't even show a picture. She's like, either it's off camera or it's a big black screen. Yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> right, but the beauty of it, beauty of it is, is I'm, now that I know the five steps, I can override that whatever I want to do in life. Right? And so now I'm, I'm doing it with speaking. And you will see as I go, right, how I, so I was afraid to start my speaking career because I thought that until I got successful, until I was able to speak at SAP Center or Oracle, I couldn't prove that it worked. Right? But what I, what I, what I realized recently was that because I, I'm not there yet, is proof that it works. Because I identified the areas where I'm falling and stumbling and fixing now. And once I fix them, watch out. I won't be doing this for free no more. I promise you. And won't be in a small room like this, right? So because of that, I'm the best person to do it because I did it, right, in some major areas. Playing football at a high level, right? Being a CFO, going to one of the top programs in the country for MBAs, Santa Clara. Mm -hmm. Raising a family, having to have, have two kids who still talk to me, who still love me. Being married 17 years, right? So I've applied those five steps. Right, and now I'm doing it again with you guys. Right, how many speakers you know are doing it with you? It's easy when you get, come out the back end and say I made it, right? I'm doing it with you guys, with my students, right? So it's a foundation, I'm the best person to do, to do it with you, right? Five pillars to, to greatness, five steps to greatness. And I'll show you, they're good for anything. It applies to everything you do in life, everything, fitness, Career, relationship, it don't matter. And I'll show you why. Everything in life. I'm sweating, I love it. All right, I'm gonna go with five steps, guys. Take notes if you want, right? Five steps. Okay, so each slide has, 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 has an overriding theme and then details for each step, all right? So step one is you have to want to be something. You have to want it. Like my, you know, I, I have boot campers who come to me, I train athletes, they all say they want it, right? But you have to want, I mean, when I was, a, when I was a eight years old, I woke up every single day wanting to play football in the NFL, every day. Not one day went by, I didn't wake up thinking about playing football in the NFL. I wanted it, I wanted it that bad. When I was done playing in college, had a few pro tryouts, didn't pan out, and my mind shift to being a CFO, or, going, or, or being something in business, something in finance, wasn't sure what I wanted to do yet, but I wanted to run something, right? Every day I woke up thinking about that. The suits I would wear, how I would look in a board meeting, how I would smell, how my, how my girlfriend at the time would look at me with my suit on. I used to go to Costco just to see, my, see me in my suit. I was, I was in a, I was in a, a startup, my first startup, it was, it was, it was a uh, web hosting company, a knock, network operations center, right? No windows. Right, computers are everywhere, right? Eight guys, one girl. I wore a suit every day. In a building where no one would see me. Every day. Why? Because I because I wasn't gonna be there forever. Right? Well, I wanted to be required a suit. So I woke up every day putting a suit on. Right? Back then I didn't I, I didn't own a good suit. JC Penny was my was my store, <laughs> believe it or not. My wife started buying me, my girlfriend at the time, started buying me ties from Nordstrom. Oh, Nordstrom, okay, okay. <laughs> 80 bucks for a tire, okay. My whole suit called 80 bucks, right? But the mindset shifted, right? So I wanted it. So people say they want to lose weight, but they don't, they don't get up every morning thinking about that six pack. Different six pack, maybe, but not that six pack, right? So they kind of want it when, when they feel overweight or they feel bad, but they don't wake up every day smelling it and want it. And the person they're mad at, the girl that was mad at because she wore a bikini in front of her husband, she woke up every morning thinking about it. The sales reps here who are in the top 5% of the company, they ain't smarter than you. They ain't cuter than you. Some don't speak better than you. But they wake up and they want that. They want it. Right? They want to be great. And so the first step is, is I, I, I'm not saying you should want it. I'm saying you have to want it though. Like you can't kind of want to be a doctor. That's not how it works. It'd be kind of cool to be a doctor. No, that's not how it works. 
Cause, cause, cause your first, your first year in residency, when you up at up to two in the morning, gotta get before to go into the, the don't suck, right? When you're trying to lose weight, and and the first, the first week is cool, cause it, cause the scale move. Second week you don't move, you still eating broccoli and chicken breast. It ain't cool no more. It ain't fun no more. So if you don't want it, it's gonna fall off the tracks real quick, right? So in my workshop that we do, I teach how to, how to make sure you want it. Like when I was a kid, I made sure I saw the image of me playing football every single day. My wall was tattered with images of football players. When I was a CFO, I listened to and watched YouTube of people who I want to look like and be like every single day. Now that I'm trying to be a speaker, I listen to audio tapes of great speakers every single day. I work out to audio tapes, ask him. Walk in, tell you, don't. I'm working out. To audio? Look at me, it works. It does. I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to get better. Okay. I'm trying to get better. I want to make sure I want it. Because cause if you don't want it bad enough, the first stumble, you're going to run. Right? I grew up stuttering. Right? So if I don't really want it, my first stutter or talking too fast, I'm going to run and hide. If I don't really want it, that's step one. Right? What does that mean? What's the impact? Greatness comes with challenge. Right? It's not easy to be great. It's not easy being the top selling agent in your district. That ain't easy. It's not easy. Is it easy? Right? So you have to go into it knowing it's going to be hard. Right? The cool part about it is, is you want it to be hard. Because that's what's going to separate you from everybody else. We don't want stuff that, nobody wants stuff that, that, that comes easy, right? So, like, the reason you want a Lamborghini, tell my son all the time, my son, I want a Lambo, dad. The reason you want it, because it's hard to get. You want a Toyota? You, you, want, you want a car like that, a, a, a Acadia, like daddy? No. Why? Because I see a lot of Acadias. Exactly. So, so, but you have to accept that, right? And what happens is, that should make you eat, sleep, and breathe it, because you know you have to run every day to chase it. Right? I don't see a Lamborghini every day. I don't see a millionaire every day. I don't see an NFL player every day. So I'm gonna wake up chasing it. Every single day. Right? Sense of urgency. I'll get into that more later. You have to, I mean, there's no time wasted to be great. If you want to be great, right? Do you really want it, right? And then the most important part is there's an underlying contract. See, people get caught up in and just the, the, this, this, this esoteric, is that the right word? Uh, this, this vague idea of what want means. Like want is not the same as don't not want. Right? I didn't want that house. I did not want it, but I didn't want it. So what does that mean, coach? So want means that you have a sense of urgency and you accept the underlying contract that comes with that. And people in, in my boot camps, they play dumb. What does that mean? Don't play dumb. Don't play dumb. You have to work out regularly for maybe a long time, and you have to eat well for maybe a long time. That's the underlying contract. You know that. Play dumb. Right? I want to be the top selling agent in my district. That means long hours. That means some calls, a lot of calls. That means a lot of footwork. Right? And so if you accept that, then you accept the underlying contract. It comes with it. So now you can say, I want it. But if you don't accept it in your heart, and your head, don't lie to me. Don't tell me. You know what you accept and what you don't accept. Right? But wanting it means you have to accept the underlying contract. And I'm not saying you should or need to. I'm saying if you want it, though, you have to. Right? So when I, when I was eight years old, I understood the contract for being in the NFL. That was 20 years of grinding, probably. Right? When I wanted to be a CFO and study for my MBA, I knew that meant studying. I wasn't naturally smart. This idea of getting the MBA and being a CFO came to me one day. I was like, you know what? I did the MBA. I want to go to Stanford. I don't like about Stanford. I want to go to Stanford. Right? So I looked it up. Right? The, the minimum score on a GMAT, right? The Graduate School of Management Admissions Test was a 650. I'm getting a 650. That's, that's, that's. So I, everywhere I went, big old books. 
everywhere I went. I didn't spend. I just. I wasn't in line nowhere. I wasn't at the mall. I wasn't in traffic without reading the book. Without studying for my GMAT. Everywhere I went. That's my. That's my wife. Everywhere I went, I had a big old book. Airport, Costco, stop. Stoplight. Because I knew I had to study. I had to. I had to. I had to risk not looking cool, to be great. That was the contract, and I accepted it. So you have to accept underlying contract in order to say you really want it. Right? And it's some self-reflection, right? So what does that mean? Brutal the work. So every 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 step has the impact and the work involved. Right? In my workshop, I go over, you know, a few hours of this work. Right? To make sure that we, that, that we move past that step. So it's brutal honesty and self-evaluation. Brutal honesty and self-evaluation. Right? I want to be a speaker. What does that mean? Speak everywhere you can. Everywhere you can. Schools, right? Farmers agent meetings, boot campers, videos. Right? Is that work? Yes. Is it scary? Oftentimes it is. Right? But I gotta be brutally honest with myself. You ain't ready, coach. You say you want it, right? For the whole week of doing no talking, you don't want it. You can't just want it when, it when it feels good, when you feel the impulse. Be honest with yourself. Right? Be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Not with me, not with your spouse, not with your kids, with yourself. You know you had a hamburger at lunch. You know you didn't do uh, the number of purpose you should be doing. You know you closed the book too soon with studying. You know you had an hour more left of calls to make and you left early. You, you know that. Right? So, so that's the work involved with the want step, right? Underlying contract, right? When you, when you begin to connect the reward with the work, that's the key, right? That's the key. So, so whenever I fall off in my fitness, I begin to immediately connect that burpee with the pool. I begin to immediately connect that burpee with my wife looking at me like, okay, okay, 47. 47, okay, I see you 47, right? So when you're grinding and it hurts, you have to immediately connect that want with what you're doing now, with what you want to quit now. That's work. That is work. Because we're not conditioned to do that, right? Right, our ancestors, and for some countries sooner than others, right, more recently than others, our ancestors had no choice but to connect what they were doing with what they wanted, right? I mean, I mean, some of our ancestors came here less than two generations ago with nothing, right? And they sat there in a one-bedroom apartment with eight kids or eight people, and they, were, and they attached this hurt to their kid going to college in 20 years. In 20 years, right? I'm not going to eat this meal. I'm going to give my kids this meal. I'm going I'm, I'm to sacrifice this, this rent money for whatever it is. I'm going to do that today so that my kid can go to college in 20 years. And they did that every day. And we can't do it or won't do it. But it's that simple. So burpees ain't, ain't easier for me, but I connect that burpee to what I want. So now when I'm doing it, there, there's a real chemical connection between that burpee and my six-pack abs. Or that burpee and my arms looking good. Right? It sounds corny, but I connect it. I connect those two. Right, so now the pain isn't as much. So we have to be, begin to co co create those strong reward connections. It's work. It's work. Right, and most people they don't do that. They don't do that. Right. So what's so step two? That's step one. So step two, right? So if you want it, if you do all that work, right, and, it, and it's a, it's a continuous cycle. I'll get into that. But let's say you let's say you really want it. Let's say you you accept the contract. You really want it. You're beginning to create these, these reward system connections. Right? The next step is you got to believe it. And people, people would think this is just some fancy, this is real stuff. And this is, these are the real barriers to our greatness. I'm telling you. Because, because there's no reason I shouldn't be speaking somewhere right now besides here. There's no reason I shouldn't be at Oracle or SAP Center. Right, commanding lots of money. There's no reason. 
right? But a kid who grew up stuttering can't believe he can speak at, a, at Oracle. How can he believe that? A kid who was teased for talking too fast, how can he believe he can be at Oracle? He can't. Right? So, so if I wanted it bad enough, and by the way, I'll go back to that real fast. So part of me didn't even want to speak. Like part of me doesn't like to fly. Right? In planes. I'll do it, but I don't love it. So guess what? If you speak a lot, you got to fly a lot. So our subconscious protects us. Right? So we can say, I want, I want to lose weight. But if all your friends are big, you might not want to lose weight. <laughs> I'm being dead serious. Subconscious-wise, you might not want to, it sounds dumb, but our subconscious, I'm telling you, protects us. Right? Now, if you lose weight, maybe you're single, right? You lose weight. Now you have no more excuses not to ask that guy out. Right? And our, and our subconscious protects us because now you, you want a reason to not ask that guy out. So, so the weight is the reason. So if, if I don't really want to speak because I'm only flying, I don't want to be laughed at, whatever it is, I could win all day up here at the surface, but my subconscious is like, no, you can't do that, coach. Remember last time you talked, you stuttered, what happened, remember? In eighth grade, what happened in eighth grade or sixth grade, right? But if you pass by that, now you got to believe it, right? So that is work, right? I mean, and we can guess the work involved in that, right, Oops. Right? So we have an internal belief system. All of us do. All of us do. That gets created the day we were born. Right? And that reel and that tape reel gets recorded on every single day by somebody. By your parents, by your teachers, by your coaches, by your friends. Since, 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 since the very moment you're born, you're dumb, you're stupid, you're ugly, you can't talk, you talk fast, you sound white. I heard that shit all the time. I had cousins in Chicago and Minnesota that told me I sounded white. Imagine, I mean, I still, it still haunts me. What does that mean? So, so I'm trying to be, talk less eloquently to these fools, right? And I go to school with mostly white kids and, and non-black kids, and I'm trying to fit in with them. So I, so I have this whole system, we all do, this whole belief system that has been created since day one. And we all think it's the big moments. Like the time you, you know, they called you ugly, or the time they called you fat, or the time you failed that test, or the time you asked the girl out and said no. It's those, but it's a lot of small ones too. A lot of small ones. All of them create this belief system that we have to worry about and overcome to move past it. And if you don't, if you don't move past it, you will not be able to, to, to take in all the tools that people give you to be great. If you believe you can't lose weight, they can give you all the, all the tools you want. If you've been told your whole life you're big boned, it, as black people say, boned it. <laughs> big, you're big boned, it, right? And, and, and your mom is big and your aunts are big. You, you just, you're just big. How you gonna lose weight? How you gonna lose weight? If your whole life you've been told that we're just we're blue collar workers, that's what we do. We, 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 don't, we don't really do academics. Oh, really? How you gonna believe you can get an get a, get a MBA or a PhD? It might, it, it might happen, but it, it's a lot of overriding that, that takes place first. And most people don't want to do the work to work on that. Right? They're late, we're lazy people. We take that, that information and we accept it. Right? Oftentimes from people who love us. My mom wouldn't tell me that if she didn't mean it. Right? My dad wouldn't tell me that if he didn't mean it. My brother wouldn't tell me that if he didn't mean it. My best friends. And so we have a belief system that, that we have to overcome, and it's mental conditioning since the day we're born. And unfortunately, what happens is the outside voices slow down at some point, hopefully, and, and usually, but that internal talk now is on its own. It's on its own. And it's beating you every day. It's kicking your butt every single day. And we taking it. Boom, 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 stay in bed. Boom, that ain't gonna work. Boom, you fell the test twice. Boom. Right? So, you cannot achieve above that belief system. It's impossible. It's a, if you don't believe you're going to lose weight, you ain't going to lose weight. I promise you. If you don't really believe that you can be a top selling agent in your company, you're wasting a lot of time and money.
because you won't do it. You cannot, you cannot achieve above your belief system, period. I cannot be a, a, a speaker at Oracle until I believe I can be an Oracle. I'm going to keep doing these small little places, right? I'm going to go to State Farm next and get them ready. I'm going to go to a Geico. <laughs> right? I'll never get past this. Little classrooms here and there, sports teams. Right? I, I'll pretend that I'm trying to go to Oracle, but I'm not because I don't believe I can be there. Your subconscious wants to be right. Right? And so what happens is, is you do things to sabotage yourself to make your subconscious right. And then... Your subconscious says, I was right. I win again. Let's go have cake. <laughs> Am I right? I'm totally right. You know I'm right. You know I'm right. Oh, they just, they just 